Hey everybody, this is the first official hot seat video. Uh, duh, this is Ron Mower. And um, before I start with the first uh, series of questions, um, I know Gobo, uh, I know that you wanted me to answer a complicated question of yours, uh, but I'm sorry, as I stated already, I know we already talked about that. That question is just too complicated. I mean, um, and plus I should have stated from the get-go, uh, this forum and thread should stay away from politics and religion because those are two topics that people get very, very animated about. And an ugly debate can break out, and I don't feel like dealing with that stuff anymore. And I know Kevin, who, uh, I mean, this might be a bit of a power struggle over that because Kevin, when he was uh, active, he would still post uh, uh, polit political questions. Who do you want to be next president? Uh, you know, and I, I like to stay away from that. I know I posted my two cents, but I didn't really feel like uh, debating or elaborating on it. Uh, those things I just feel uncomfortable talking about. And plus, that question, those questions were just too complicated. I mean, I don't, I don't want to have to, I don't want, I'm not going to answer questions that involve too much research and thought or whatever. I don't have time for that. I'm sorry. Uh, I know you want to stay, steer away from the simple who, what, when, where, and why questions and how or whatever. But uh, that's just too. Uh, if you want to do those kind of questions, that's fine. But try not to make them so complex. And th these other questions, who, who, what, when, where, and why questions, I'm not. I'm not going to be like, like for example, Ronnie. What's your favorite color? Blue. Next question. You know, I'm not going to answer like. I'll try my best to elaborate on the answer. Cause it'd be boring if I just gave one simple answer and then move on. You know, I mean that'd be a boring hot seat thread, right? really. Uh, a hot seat video now in particular um, so I thought I'd revamp the hot seat thread series by doing it video blog style and hopefully I won't be the only one to do this so uh, there you go uh, first series of questions comes from Archangel Zero oh, oh, oh. Uh, first question what would be your dream company to work for oh man that's a great great question right there uh, I always wanted to work for Nintendo of America and be a gameplay counselor. Now you're probably thinking, what the heck are you talking about? What's a gameplay counselor? A Nintendo gameplay counselor is somebody that basically sits around all day playing video games. Now of course there's a catch. There's probably more than one catch. Um, I think you, might, you might have to do paperwork as well. Uh, and probably other stuff, other chores, side work. Uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, and you have to be able to type at least 30 words a minute, easy, get a high school diploma, done, uh, and that's it, and oh yeah, answer phone calls of people that are calling and asking questions about a game, like for example, uh, Nintendo Gameplay Counselors, this is Ronnie, how may I help you, yeah, how do I beat, uh, yeah, how do I beat Ganondorf from, um, uh, the version of Zelda Ocarina of Time, uh, if you don't know the answer off the top of your head, what are you going to do? Well, there's a computer in front of you, obviously. Uh, you type in, in the query, Ganondorf, Ocarina of Time, and there's there's like a little strategy where you, you read the answer to them. But a lot of gameplay counselors play so many games and check out those games out of the video game library, which consists of every single Nintendo game ever made, and they have time to play it, take it home with them or whatever. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of gameplay counselors knew the answer off the top of their head. I wanted to be a gameplay counselor so bad. Ever since like sixth grade, which is around '94, um, I mean, I always wanted to be a one bad. That was my ultimate dream job. Uh, I wanted to. Uh, I was asking questions about it, and I was actually thinking about dropping out of high school just to be a gameplay counselor. Another big catch: you have to live in Seattle, Washington, or Redmond, Washington. Uh, you know, because there's only one gameplay counseling, I guess, in America for Nintendo, and that's Nintendo of America in Redmond, Washington. And I wanted to be a gameplay counselor so bad because I've always played, loved to play video games all my life. And I always want to have a job doing that. And, uh, you know, I always wanted to do that real bad. And I was, uh, sometime last year, I was still thinking about doing it. Uh, you know, I would hate to leave Waco, Texas and all my friends and family and be real homesick. But, you know, I don't want to be a busboy all my life. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you want to do more. And me in particular, I wanted to do more, and I wanted to have that job. Uh, and so, 
I called into North America sometime last year and I said, yeah, uh, because, you know, the years have passed, so things probably changed. And I said, what's the qualification of being a game plan counselor? And are you guys hiring? Um, he said, oh, we got rid of that position in 2005. That is no longer available because of, they got rid of it because of the power of the Internet. And, uh, you know, people did, no longer need to call a 900 number to get gameplay help. You can go to any website these days, GameFacts.com, Nintendo.com, um, whatever site, you know, in different forums, and get gameplay help so easily by, by your fingertips. Uh, you don't need to call a 900 number, an expensive 900 number. No, I don't know if it's that expensive, I forgot, but I was never allowed to call it until I got my own apartment, and I started asking them questions, way before I had the internet, and I started asking them questions about this and that, you know, and it's, uh, 900 numbers, though, they'll run your phone bill up in a hurry if you're not careful. Uh, that was the pre-internet days of my life, and, uh, sadly, but, uh, uh, justifiably, it's not around no more. And, uh, so my hopes and dreams of that job is dashed, so it's, it's basically, it's, the, all it is now is just a dream. But, uh, man, it would have been great, but, it wasn't God's will, but man, that would have been a fun job right there. I mean, imagine that. If you're a gamer, just everybody's dream job as a, as a big video gamer is to have a job playing video games. So being a video game reviewer, maybe a video game programmer. I didn't want to program them. When I was a little kid, I wrote a letter to Capcom saying, One day I'm going to work for you guys and I'm going to uh, help you guys make the next Street Fighter or whatever. I, and then my plans changed and... Uh, I just wanted to play games, and man, it would be so much fun just to do that for the rest of my life, because I'd be happy. I mean, I think I would be happy doing that, but God had different plans for me, uh, so that's not going to happen, but uh, it would be still a wonderful thought. Okay, Angel's next question. If you were going to visit a foreign country, which would it be? Uh, hmm, good question. I don't really ever care to get out of America. Uh... Well, I, wasn't, I wouldn't visit Iraq, I'll tell you that. Um, well, I guess because I've always liked Hispanic and Asian women, I'll probably go to Mexico or Asia. <laughs> I guess that sounds like a pretty good reason to go there, just for the women. Uh, but other than that, um, I'll probably go to Japan in particular, just to meet Hayao Kojima and Shigeru Miyamoto, or whatever the producer's name of The Legend of Zelda is. Uh, I would like to meet those guys in person and tell them how awesome they are. For creating two of the greatest video game franchises of all time, and uh, I would also like to go to Japan to meet the producer or the creator of Mega Man. I forgot his name. Uh, I would like to thank him for making uh, the Mega Man series and telling him that Mega Man 2 is my favorite video game of all time, and you really uh, made my childhood by making that game and creating Mega Man. And I would also love to disagree with him that Mega Man 3 is the worst in this series. Now, come on now. No way that Mega Man 3 is the worst in this series. Now, come on. Uh, I, well, I'll tell you country I would not want to visit. Uh, that'd be Mexico. And uh, that's because I'm white. Uh, and I, I'm not racist. But I heard stories, you know, if you go to Mexico and you're not Mexican, you're going to get jumped. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, I heard that Angel... Uh, Venom told me this a while back, uh, unless he's joking around, that Angel, you went to Mexico, and when you go to Mexico, you dress poor on purpose and dirty, because even if you're Mexican, if you, you can get jumped, if you walking around with nice shoes and nice clothes or whatever, unless you got protection or whatever, if you're someone off the street, you know, they see you walking around all, looking all nice and fancy, you're gonna get jumped, and so I heard a story of, of you going to Mexico and, uh, Dressing dirty and poor on purpose. Very smart. Very smart. Uh, and so, I don't want to go to Mexico. And uh, so, where I, where would I go? I I'd pretty much go to Japan for the reasons I stated previously. So there you go. Okay, Angel's next question: What would be your favorite car and why? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know much about cars. But the car I have right now, I'm very proud of, uh, 86 Ford Crown Victoria. That's pretty much the car 
that I, I would like to have, the only car I care to ever have. But um, if for some reason, God forbid, I have to get rid of this car I have now, uh, I don't, back then when I was a kid, I was all about the uh, flashy, new, up-to-date cars. Uh, I wouldn't have mind having a Pontiac Grand Am. Uh, well, I think it came out in 93, not, or 92 or 93. That seemed like a real cool car to have. Uh, I wouldn't mind having a Venom's truck. Uh, uh, I don't know the model or whatever, but I wouldn't mind having that pickup. A truck. Uh, it, it's a it's a pretty cool, looks like a pretty cool truck to have. Uh, my car is old, but for an old car, it still runs great and it's a classic car. Uh, my dad gave it to me. Uh, I didn't have to pay a dime for the car itself. I just had to pay for the tags and title and or or whatever. Uh, I think the car was originally worth five thousand dollars at the time. My dad wanted to sell it to me back in August of two thousand three, and I'm glad I have it. It's much better than the piece of crap car that I had before that, uh, which is an '88 Nissan 200 SX. Uh, nothing wrong with that model car, but it was new. It was awesome. But I bought it used and old, and at first it broke down on me a lot. Then I had it fixed, and for six months straight it ran good. Then it started messing up again. I had enough of it, it and then uh, it got wrecked. I sold it to a junkyard, and uh, then my dad gave me the Four, four Crown Victoria. So I'm lucky to have God bless me with that car because I love my big, roomy uh uh, Crown Victoria. Here's a picture of it right here. That's me standing next to it. Yeah. And I know it's wrecked. Uh, that was back in uh, October, I think. Angel took that picture. Angel, you took that picture. Uh, that's a uh, classic. And I know it's wrecked in the front. Uh, the wreck was my fault. Um, it was worse because the, the front right there, uh, it was to where when I hit a dip in the road or whatever, the top of, the, of that fender, whatever you call it, would hit the top of the tire and scrape it so I had uh, some uh, took it to a body shop and had them pull it out and uh, I didn't feel I didn't have the money or the, uh, to get it fixed I wasn't going to get granted any money because the, the wreck was my fault so uh, but other than that you know the car is great uh, the car still runs great for its age uh, I think for 86 model uh, it, it barely reached 200,000 miles I think and for a car that old it should have been the mileage should be much more, I guess. I don't know a lick about cars. I mean, I didn't even learn how to drive until I was like 22 years old. So, but that's all I can tell you is that that pretty much the car I would love to have. Um, you know, a big roomy car where I pick up chicks in all the time. And okay, well, not really. Uh, but I still love the cars. It's a classic. It's a legend. Okay, Angel's next question. If you were to make a fan-based video game yourself, which one would you remake better? Uh, well, let's see here. I would uh, probably remake Mortal Kombat better. Uh, I did enjoy the old Mortal Kombat games back in the day. Mortal Kombat's 1, 2, and 3. Uh, and I would make the gameplay, the actual fighting, better uh, to where it has good uh, fluent street fighting strategy just like in Street Fighter uh, and I'll probably make the music more better in Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3 and in particular I think from what Venom 22 was saying about the later Mortal Kombat games such as uh, Deadly Alliance or Deception or whatever uh, I would make the game actual gameplay less broken uh, you know I'll, I'll just make the, the, the actual fighting less broken because it seems like Mortal Kombat's popularity is, is it seems like it's solely based, and especially fanboys will tell you this. Mortal Kombat's better than Street Fighter because it has finishing moves in blood and gore. Uh, which is ridiculous. And I remember when Mortal Kombat 1 first came out in 93, uh, people would always argue about that. It was better because it has finishing moves. I was like, and I was a big Street Fighter. I'm not going to lie. I think back then I was a Street Fighter fanboy. I was like, no way, man. Street Fighter's better. It's just, it's just more fun. Even though I was a fanboy and I was going to argue against Mortal Kombat no matter what, uh, I, I look back and I, I look back at myself and I'm like, I was right in my opinion. Street Fighter was just more fun, better music, the fighting. It was just more fun to play. Mortal Kombat was fun because the finish moves in blood mainly and the gore. 
that's what really made it popular in my opinion so I would go back and make the music more better more lively uh, and the actual fighting uh, much more put much more fluidity I guess you would say in the actual fighting just like Street Fighter has and uh, yeah Calback is right I would not change a thing about Mega Man 2 even though I'm not uh, I don't like every single aspect about it it's still my favorite video game of all time I give it 9 out of 10 heck probably a 10 out of 10 even when, when saying that I don't like everything about it I just feel like giving it a 10 out of 10 uh, but I still wouldn't I don't like Crash Man's music I still wouldn't change a thing because Mega Man 2 is uh, almost perfect and I wouldn't change a thing about Mega Man 2 okay and Angel's last question who is your favorite all-time video game character and explain why uh, pretty much everybody knows Mega Man is my favorite video game character of all time and the reason why is well uh, the first Mega Man game I've ever played was Mega Man 2 and I just got, got hooked on it real quick I actually feel like a total idiot because when I first played it uh, I thought those, those robot masters that you saw on the screen I thought that uh, you got to actually play as those characters I thought she got to play as Airman or play as Quick Man or whatever. Then one day I heard someone say, Oh, he's hard, as they were choosing a robot master. And I was like, Oh, you play as them. So, uh, but anyway, uh, that's uh, memories right there. Memories. Mega Man 2, my favorite video game of all time. Uh, and that's why Mega Man is my favorite video game character of all time. I don't like the. Uh, later Mega Man games like X3, 4, 5, 6, I, in my opinion Mega Man fell off right there it wasn't good no more um, my favorite Mega Man's in particular are 2, 3, 4, and 5, X and X2 X3 wasn't really a bad game I just get, didn't get hooked onto it that much and mainly because of the music uh, X2 was the last Mega Man game that I really liked <clears throat> and uh, I mean that's other great video game characters out there obviously I mean you got the Hulk Hogan of video game characters which is uh, uh, Mario and uh, Sonic is another legend uh, Ryu Ken uh, Chun-Li I had a crush on Chun-Li when I was a kid um, I liked Bison also as a character in Street Fighter um, Link is another legend, no pun intended. Uh, and but yeah, mine of all time is Mega Man, and because of Mega Man Two mainly and, and its classic uh, Mega Man games. So there you go. Uh, our next series of questions comes from Cowback. Uh, she says, "Quote: I've got eight questions." Okay. Uh, first one: When are you going to shut up, Ron? Uh, I guess as soon as I get through this video, then I'll shut up for now. Uh, now, the first real question. If you could spend a day with any video game character, who would it be? Well, I, li I would like to uh, spend time with Chun-Li from Street Fighter. That'd be nice. Uh, other than that, other than her, uh, I don't know. I mean... Yeah, I, I liked Mega Man, Mario, and Sonic, but do I want to? Who I want to spend time with? Uh, I don't know. Um, when I was a kid, I uh, always wanted to, uh, I guess, be a Ninja Turtle. And I know those are mainly cartoon characters or comic book characters more than video game characters, but they did have their own video games, and so it'd be nice to uh, play in a video game with them and hang out with them that way. Uh, I guess I would uh, hang out with some of the characters from Streets of Rage, you know, and fight side by side with them. Uh, I don't know, really. Uh, I think Chun Li seems to be the favorite to hang uh, for me to hang out with. Uh, second question: If you could have cool abilities, what kind would you want? Uh, let's see. Well. Um, to be able to fight like the characters in Capcom vs. SNK2, uh, I've always thought it'd be tight to do some of those combos like that in real life. I like those combos better than the combos of Killer, in Killer Instinct for some reason. Uh, I think it'd be tight to have those special abilities to be able to fight like that 
and uh, just do awesome combos. You know, and I, I would love to have special abilities like uh, uh, Ryu's, Ryu and Ken's Fireball or maybe Ryu and Ken's Dragon Punch. Uh, that'd be pretty cool. And let's see, what else? Uh, uh, obviously the fly. That'd be cool to fly. You know, I think pretty much all of us have had a dream where we've flown. Uh, I know I've had a dream when I was a kid where I would uh, flap my arms up and down and I would just be flying. So that would be pretty cool. Uh, be invincible, obviously. That would be pretty cool to be invincible. Uh, I guess x-ray vision or supervision to see, uh, I guess, like the way Superman does or whatever. Um, to be quick, like the Flash, that would be a cool ability to be that fast. Uh, to get things done uh, real quick, you know, and to get schoolwork done that quick would be awesome. Uh, the ability to uh, have unlimited intelligence that would probably be my favorite because uh, that way you don't have to really if you, if, you had, if you had unlimited intelligence you know you pretty much know everything you don't have to study to for test you can just know it already in your head you know just be super smart I'd like to be a super genius that'd be cool that'd be a cool ability to have uh I guess that's it. I can't think of any more. Uh, and Calback's third and final question. Do you think I'm ugly? Yes, I do. You're freaking ugly. Get off the forum. No, I'm just kidding. No, I don't think you're ugly. Uh, but I think ink looks better. Uh, I'm probably going to get banned by that now that Calback is root administrator. Uh, okay, so that's it. And, uh... And that is it. Uh, thank you, Angel and Cal Cobalt, Calvac, uh, for asking me those questions. Um, kind of wish more people would have participated, but oh well, that's fine. Um, as far as who is next in the hot seat, uh, I'll go ahead and pick Angel. Oh, ho, ho. all right. See y'all later.